When during the summer of 1929, construction fell off, inventories piled up, prices, employment, and production declined. On October 29th, Black Tuesday, the bottom dropped out and the market crashed. The Great Depression was here. Meanwhile, industrial America sprang up along the railroads. Factories and jobs, foundries and steel plants, and more jobs. Our agriculture, our mines, our great mills and oil wells. The whole national economy tied together by sinews of steel. When brothers Galen and Carol Rausch started Roadway, the trucking industry barely existed. Although goods had been moving by truck within cities for over 20 years, the nation's infrastructure made long distance freight transportation by truck impractical. But America's industries were prospering in the 1920s and companies needed fast and reliable transportation of raw goods and finished products. Akron, Ohio was a major producer of tires and other rubber-based products, which provided an excellent opportunity to become part of the emerging trucking industry. Roadway Express was the Rausch brothers' second experience in trucking. The first was a company called R&M Transportation, which Carol Rausch and a partner named Chick Morrison had formed in December of 1929. Their first shipment, a load of tires, left Akron on February 22nd, 1930, and arrived in St. Louis an amazing two days later. Amazing because they shaved five days off the time rail shipments often took. Because of this initial success, the customer quickly came back with more shipments. So many that Rausch and Morrison were able to add 10 drivers to the Akron to St. Louis run. The new business was off to a great start. Chick Morrison handled day-to-day -day operations, and Carol Rausch solicited freight from the Akron Tire Companies, traveled to St. Louis to arrange for return freight, and contracted with drivers who were owner-operators. Carol asked his older brother Galen a lawyer searching for a job at the time, to handle calls, billing, and other paperwork. Although hesitant at first, Galen agreed and quickly devoted himself full-time to the company. The fledgling trucking industry was one of the few bright spots of the decade-long economic slump known as the Great Depression. Trucking companies fared well because it remained necessary to move goods and raw materials. The trucking industry offered more attractive rates, provided faster service, and handled smaller shipments than the railroads. Inspired by r and growth, the Rausch brothers decided to organize a new company that would be family-owned and serve a larger territory than r and In late 1930, Roadway Express was established with the Rausches in the driver's seat. Chick Morrison sold the brothers his stake, and r and operation was merged with roadways. <music> Trucking in the early days was a true adventure. There were no interstates, and nearly half of the Akron to St. Louis run was on rough gravel roads. Even minor hills were an obstacle. Like most of the early trucking companies, Roadway hired owner-operators who drove for a percentage of the freight charges. This allowed Roadway to quickly add capacity when needed because the company didn't need to buy equipment or hire employees. The company just dispatched one of the many eager men who waited at Roadway garages hoping for a load of freight. Because Roadway took full responsibility for shipments, the company placed a great deal of trust in owner-operators to deliver freight safely and on time. Although the 
Rausch brothers shared a vision to make their company the biggest and best in the nation, they had different perspectives on how to achieve that success. As the 1930s progressed, Galen concentrated on managing the western portion of Roadway's system, and Carroll handled the central and eastern areas. Their operations reflected their different approaches to running Roadway. Drivers under Galen worked for a percentage of the freight charges, while Carroll's drivers drove on a mileage or tonnage basis. The brothers also disagreed on the best way to carry out Roadway's primary service, moving freight. With rates fixed by regulation and the number of shipments growing, trucking companies had little incentive to provide better service. Like most of the industry, Carroll felt that more freight per truck, not service, was the key to success. Galen, on the other hand, emphasized service. His approach was unusual in a regulated industry. In a business where federal regulations set shipping prices, Galen felt that dependable service would make roadway more profitable. It was his idea to have terminals open around the clock, which was unheard of in the industry and just one of the many innovations created by roadway. Carroll soon saw that Galen's idea for a 24-7 operation enabled the company to make better use of its facilities and provide better service. For Galen, customer service and the ultimate success of Roadway depended on service and the timely delivery of every shipment. During World War II, American manufacturing cranked up to full throttle, producing planes, tanks, ammunition, and all of the other equipment needed by troops overseas. All of that manufacturing created a boom in the trucking industry, as raw materials needed to be moved to factories and finished goods to ports. At that time, each state had its own regulations for truck height, length, width, and weight as well as license fees and gasoline and mileage taxes. This forced drivers to comply with different regulations as they traveled from state to state. The Office of Defense Transportation quickly stepped in to assist the war effort. They straightened out the jumble of conflicting state regulations and eliminated the national 35 mile per hour speed limit. Trucks were able to move more quickly and efficiently across the country. Roadway's eastern and southeastern routes extended from Akron to New York City, Philadelphia, Winston-Salem, Gadsden, Alabama, and some smaller cities along the way. In the west, operations reached Chicago, St. Louis, Memphis, Oklahoma City, and Dallas. Safety was emphasized on all routes, and Roadway inaugurated a safety program that recognized drivers who had driven the past calendar quarter without a preventable accident. After World War II, an expanding economy and a regulated market allowed many companies, including Roadway, to grow. Yet Galen continued to emphasize service and customer satisfaction, which grew into the official motto Roadway adopted in the 1950s, dedicated to better service. These words were a day-to-day -day operating philosophy that helped make Roadway the largest common carrier in the country over the next three decades. To provide more reliable service and comply with increasing government regulations, Roadway began to gradually shift to company-owned equipment driven by company employees. Galen believed that Roadway could provide better service by operating and controlling its own equipment. Roadway started running company-owned equipment between Cleveland and Chicago on a trial basis in 1945. The more reliable service it created was very popular with customers and more profitable for Roadway. The benefits to the company were so great that the move to company-owned equipment gained speed. In 1951, Roadway bought 35 new tractors at $8,000 each from a Winston-Salem dealer. 
and later that year bought nearly 250 trailers. Eventually, all of the owner-operators either became employees or sold their services to other carriers. By the mid-1950s, Roadway would own 95% of its equipment, and the emphasis on safety would become even more important. Roadway continued its vehicle inspection program, which began in the mid-1930s, to ensure all equipment was checked before leaving the terminal. Safety inspectors traveled the highways to examine equipment while it was on the road. And in 1955, Roadway became the first American trucking company to install safety belt harnesses in its vehicles. In the mid-1950s, the modern roadway system began to take shape with two revolutionary innovations, the hub and spoke network and the relay system. At some of roadway's larger terminals, full trailer loads were brought in and broken down into smaller loads for delivery by local drivers. This arrangement saved roadway money because bringing one fully loaded trailer to a terminal and then breaking it down for local delivery into smaller trucks was much more efficient. And customers liked having a driver they knew making their regular deliveries. That was the beginning of the hub and spoke or brake bulk satellite system designed and implemented by Otto Lipfurt. Lipfurt began his career as a driver and went on to become president of the company. The other major service innovation was the single driver relay system to keep trucks and freight moving non-stop through the system. One long haul truck was no longer assigned to one driver. When one driver had put in his daily driving limit and went off duty, another would take his place. It worked like the Pony Express in reverse. Instead of riders changing horses, roadway changed drivers. This allowed for much better use of equipment and kept freight moving getting it there faster. These innovations were implemented throughout the roadway system, and many were later adopted throughout the trucking industry. Over the next two decades, roadway developed its operation by replacing and modernizing terminals and expanding geographic coverage through acquisitions. Since the early days, Roadway has led the industry in using technology to analyze data and improve every aspect of operations. Roadway's first data processing machine was an IBM tabulator, bought in 1938 to analyze freight bills. In the days before keyboards and magnetic tape, information was fed into the tabulator on paper cards punched with holes. With more company-owned equipment coming online in the early 1950s, Roadway needed to determine the costs of running its fleet. To do so, Roadway fed data on the movements of tractors and trailers from shipping manifests, dispatch orders, and freight bills into its electronic IBM punch card machines. This provided information Roadway used to calculate the profitability of each traffic lane. It was the first cost accounting system of its kind in the transportation industry, and it helped roadway better manage costs and increase profits. When the current headquarters opened in 1962, the first occupant wasn't a person. It was the company's new IBM 7070 mainframe computer. Like most roadway facilities, the Akron headquarters reflected Galen's bare-bones approach to buildings. But while he was conservative in most of his spending, he aggressively invested in technology. In 1967, all of Roadway's operations were tied into a computer for the first time. The Roadway Express Advance Notice, or Rexan system, tracked the operation of tractors, trailers, shipments, and driver time. Because it produced current rather than historical data, the Rexan system improved Roadway's ability to provide prompt service and to control costs. 
Roadway introduced the industry's first simplified zip code-based rating system in 1983, a computerized instant shipment tracking system, an automated telephone voice response system, and customer shipping software soon followed. Roadway improved and advanced these technologies in the 1990s. As customers began using the internet, Roadway introduced the first web-based applications for shipping management. In the mid-1990s, Roadway began equipping tractors with satellite communications equipment that provided position updates every 15 minutes. In the year 2000, Roadway became the first less-than-truckload or LTL carrier to combine cellular and satellite technologies for gathering and sending real-time data along local pickup and delivery routes. This innovative technology is called Roadway Digital Dispatch, and it provides two-way messaging and vehicle tracking for pickup and delivery operations. For service is our promise, service is our land. You gotta move out the break, keep up the flow. From 1935 to 1980, the trucking industry focused on pleasing a federal regulator, the Interstate Commerce Commission. As a company, Roadway's decisions, plans, growth, and markets depended largely on its ability to meet the ICC's standards of what motor carriers ought to be and do. The Motor Carrier Act of 1980 turned Roadway's world upside down. The act sent the protected trucking industry straight into the free market competitive business world. The old rate structures were gone. Existing carriers could compete on price and new carriers were free to enter the market. Roadway quickly began to lose business to cut rate carriers. New low cost and non-union competitors created massive overcapacity and pushed down freight rates. Roadway resisted lowering rates, hoping that price cutting was temporary and shippers were more interested in quality. But as the business began to struggle, Roadway CEO William Spitznagel realized that Roadway's future depended on an abrupt departure from past practices. As a result, Roadway Express formed a holding company called Roadway Services in 1982 to build a portfolio of transportation companies that could operate in areas beyond traditional LTL markets. By 1995, the distinctions between the subsidiary companies owned by Roadway Services were beginning to blur. A plan was announced to spin off Roadway Express, its largest subsidiary. This signaled a new chapter for Roadway Express. We're here meeting with the Canadian government to get approval for our recent acquisition of Reimer Truck Lines. In 1997, nearly two years after the spinoff from Roadway Services, Roadway Express acquired the number one carrier in Canada, Reimer Express Lines. The combination of Roadway and Reimer created a seamless transportation network, providing a fully integrated system extending across Canada, the United States, and Mexico. In 2001, Roadway Express formed a new holding company called Roadway Corporation to build a portfolio of strategically linked companies. One of the first acquisitions by the new corporation included New Penn Motor Express, a highly profitable, less-than-truckload regional carrier that provides next-day ground service in the northeastern United States. The most recent chapter in Roadway's history began in 2003, 
when the company became part of a new corporate family, the newly formed Yellow Roadway Corporation. Investors responded positively and stock prices soared. Today, the Roadway brand remains a fixture in the marketplace. With a continued focus on providing superior service, Roadway Express is an industry leader and an integral part of one of the largest transportation providers in the world. From the very beginning, Galen Rausch realized that a transportation company that kept its commitment to service could attract and keep customers. This legacy of service is deeply rooted in Roadways culture and is the power, strength, and energy driving today's workforce. Fueled by an open book management model called Engagement Through Education in the Fundamentals of Business, or EEFB, employees have the knowledge, skill, and confidence to continue this commitment to service. Roadway's history is a very proud one. It is a history filled with intense challenges in a highly competitive industry. From breakthrough strategy to innovative technology, numerous factors have contributed to the company's evolution. But one key ingredient stands high above all others. Roadway people. A highly skilled, dedicated and proud workforce that has enabled the company to thrive and succeed. Roadway's people have always strived to provide the best possible service to customers. And this heritage is the foundation on which Roadway Express stands today. Behind the wheel and in service centers across North America, the people of Roadway are leaders. Leaders engaged in the success of one another and committed to the success of Roadway. Leaders dedicated to understanding the customer's business, focused on anticipating their needs and providing the best transportation value in the marketplace. Leaders proud to be part of the legacy that enables Roadway to celebrate such a remarkable history and the force that will drive Roadway's success well into the 21st century. For service is our promise, service is our land. You gotta move out the break, keep up the flow, deliver it where it's got to go. Deliver it where it's got to go. You better get it there on time. 